Welcome to the Pyramid Insider. I'm Tyler Patner. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Seneca Eagle Claw Carbine in 25 caliber. So of course the Eagle Claw is an import under the Seneca line for Air Venturi bringing this in here and kind of dropped on us a little bit last minute here in 2019 as an end of the year new product launch. Wasn't announced at SHOT Show and actually the Eagle Claw has been on the market in other parts of the world in different variations and stuff like that for almost two years now. So uh, really excited to see this finally come to the U.S. because it has a lot of intriguing features that we're going to go over here in just a minute. But before we do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate it very much. Now let's check out the Eagle Claw in more detail. So starting at the front of the Eagle Claw. Now remember, uh, looking in line with the, the rest of the Seneca line, this is really the next evolution of the Sumatra, which is also a lever action. But unlike the Sumatra, the Eagle Claw is fully shrouded and actually does have baffles here in the end of the shroud. So it makes it much more backyard friendly than the Sumatra ever was, which was a huge gripe with that gun. Uh, underneath the full length shroud, you have a 17 inch barrel here in the carbine version. This is available in 22 and 25 caliber. Uh, it's also available in a full length version uh, with a little bit longer barrel and a little bit longer overall length. Like I said, 17 inch barrel, you are looking at a 41 and a half inch overall length here in the carbine version. Now, as we come back on the shroud, you'll notice that we do have a nice barrel band here that goes around both the cylinder and the shroud. Uh, and that leads us down to the quick disconnect fitting here on the end, which is very nice and easy to use. Comes with a nice cap here that just snaps on right over it. Uh, very easy, simple system. Love the QD on there. Nice and exposed, easy to get to. No problems filling this gun. It does fill the 200 bar, 2900 PSI. And thankfully, there is a gauge on the underside, which is color coded. You got that 200 bar marking where it stops the green, goes to red. So very easy to read gauge. Very nice overall presentation. Uh, 360 cc cylinder, and it's rated for about 20 shots on high power. I say high power as well because we do have an adjustable power wheel very similar to what we had on the Sumatra here underneath. So we'll test it for you at a couple different locations to give you guys some idea. But as you can see here, you have a ton of adjustment range. So anywhere in between that, you know, almost a thousand down to 500 range should be achievable right with this wheel here. And of course, as you adjust it, it's going to change your shot count as well. We'll cover all that once we head out to the range. And coming up to the breech here, we do have a full length Picatinny rail that actually splits the breech here. So a uh, nice thing about this, we'll talk about the magazines here in just a second, uh, but your magazine doesn't sit up higher than your breech. So you don't have to worry about scope clearance or anything like that with uh, the saddle of the scope if you do want to go over the breech there, which is really nice, uh, but just got a Hawk Air Max compact, uh, the six to 24 version mounted here, should complement the rifle pretty nicely. Um, one thing I do wanna point out about the breech here, and I'll actually go ahead and open that up. I uh, don't know if you guys can see it there, but there's this little screw just in here. So uh, what this does is actually kind of matches up with these slots on the bottom of the magazine and allows you to have kind of a stopper position for the mag when you load it in. So when you load it in, it can't go any further through the breech. And what that screw does is you can actually flip it to the other side if you are maybe a left-handed shooter and you prefer to load it from the other side. So as it sits right now, uh, so I can get around a side wheel or something like that on my scope, I can load it here from the right hand to the left hand side very easily and that screw stops it. So adjustable if you want it. And talking about the magazines, these are plastic magazines, which is kind of a departure from the Sumatra, uh, but a little higher capacity, which I like a lot. So eight rounds as opposed to six, and you do get two of them with the rifle. So very nice there. And these are very basic spring-loaded magazines. You're just gonna load a pellet into the front of the mag and then rotate around, it locks into place. You load another one, you keep on going until it's full, really easy. And we have a cross bolt style safety, which is actually engaged right now. I'm gonna disengage it to show you guys how to decock this gun before we talk about the lever action. Uh, the trigger does have an adjustment to it uh, for the release point. So basically that release weight uh, is adjustable. Haven't touched it out of the box. We'll get it on the scale and see how it does. But to decock the rifle, once it's in the cock position, you're just gonna wanna hold the lever open and then go ahead, pull the trigger. You kind of feel it come back under spring tension, then move your hand out of the way and close it up and you're all good to go. Very easy. 
easy to do. Just make sure you're keeping your hands clear of this area here. Talking about that lever action, you guys will notice it's got some nice shape to it, really contours nicely with the grip of the rifle. Uh, one thing for me personally, I could not cycle the Sumatra like this. Obviously you saw me just do it there. I can do it with the Eagle Claw with ease. I don't know what Air Venturi has done with this, um, but this is so easy and smooth to cycle. It is really a dream and allows you to get shots off so quick. Um, this brings lever action love right into the equation for me. I'm digging on this lever action system. It's super awesome and uh, really for me a highlight of this Eagle Claw. Last but certainly not least, the stock, a very nice Indonesian walnut. You have checkering on both the forend here and the grip area. Uh, the cheek piece, you got a raised cheek piece for those right-handed shooters out there, which feels very nice, brings the gun into the shoulder and onto the cheek really nicely. For you lefties out there, don't feel bad. There, It is completely kind of uh, not raised over on the right-hand side of the stock, so you really shouldn't have a problem using this gun if you are a lefty. And of course, we round out at a rubber butt pad at the back. Overall, the fit, finish, feel of this gun is great. I'm digging it. Uh, just a matter of how it's gonna perform on the range because they say big power, and if it's got accuracy to back it up, this thing is definitely gonna be one to watch. Let's go head out to the range and see what it can do. Loading the Eagle Claw magazine is really simple. Now this is the back side of the mag here. You don't want to load it from the back side. The pellets will actually fall out of the back. You want to load it from the front and you want to load it skirt first. So very simple. You just drop those skirts in, kind of give them a little push. They'll drop on down and then you just rotate. It clicks into place and locks it. You don't have to hold it under tension or anything. You do that for all eight rounds and you are good to go. Probably my favorite feature on the Eagle Claw is this lever action. Just how much smoother it is than the Sumatra that came before it. This thing is incredibly fast with follow-up shots for you hunters out there. If you need that quick follow-up, this is absolutely going to deliver it at blistering speeds. Check this out. just that fast. I mean, it's probably a second, just have to reacquire the target and you're good to go. This thing is so smooth, so easy to operate. Absolutely some lever action love. So going straight out to 45 yards here with the Eagle Claw gun in this price point should absolutely be able to perform at that distance. Now, while this isn't a bench gun by any means, this is a hunting rig. So we're looking for one inch or better accuracy. Uh, that's going to do a squirrel's head every time at 45, 50 yards. And this thing's got the power for far more than that. So let's see how it did here. Uh, the Seneca 43.2 grain pointed pellets. You got a 1.3 inch group here with seven out of eight and one inch. Uh, definitely can do better than that. Let's see what we got. The King Heavies, JSBs, of course, six out of eight and about three quarters of an inch. If you take these two away here at the bottom, 1.2 inches total. So still not that great. Uh, but moving up to the King Heavy Mark II's, a pure one inch group for eight shots, a full mag there. A uh, little bit of a big vertical dispersion. Could have been some velocity change. The gun's not regulated. So as you shoot through the, uh, the air consumption, you're going to get a little bit of up and down there, especially at distance. Uh, but the best of the day, the standard JSB Kings, 25.4 grains. I'm a little surprised by this because it's going to be pushing them very fast on this high power setting. Three quarters of an inch for all eight shots, sending about four or five right through the center of that group there. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. This is going to get the job done on game every time for you. Good accuracy out of the Eagle Claw. Let's put it over the chronograph and see how many shots we're getting. Starting off with the high power setting from 200 bar down to about 140 bar, uh, the 25.4 JSBs are putting out an average of around 975 feet per second, and that's really over those 16 shots in that sweet spot we're seeing. And, and that sweet spot, just so you guys know, considering that under 30 feet per second since the gun's unregulated. So 27 feet per second is our extreme spread for those 16 shots, and that's about a 53 and a half foot pound average, which is a ton of power. Dropping the gun down to medium power, and we'll show you on the power wheel where that is here in just a second. From 200 bar to 140 bar again, we're getting a couple more shots here, 
uh, but really we're still looking at that same sweet spot about 16 good shots there uh, within 30 feet per second actually the extreme spread is identical to our high power string at 27 feet per second and we're actually getting an average that is three feet per second higher than our high power setting at 978 feet per second so you're still looking at the same 53 and a half foot pound average dropping the gun down to the lowest power setting you're going to get a ton of shots now whether or not it's actually going to be useful for you at just a roughly 380 feet per second maybe not but looking at about eight foot pounds of energy and you're going to be able to do around 90 shots over the course of an entire string now we're just showing you about 32 good shots here that we took uh, but it only used up about 20 bars so you're getting really really great air consumption uh, a very consistent results as well uh, super low standard deviation but again very little energy just eight foot pounds of energy out of the 25 fours on the lowest power setting Wanted to take a second now that you've seen the chronograph results and show you what those power wheel settings we were using were. So what you're seeing right now is our highest power setting. That's that red dot. That's where the wheel stops, okay? So that is ultra high power. That's where we were supposed to be getting our best energy, about 55 foot-pounds with those 25 fours. Uh, and we're getting about 16 good shots within 30 feet per second. Now moving down here, this black dot is where I was on for medium power. So this is about half of the revolution adjustment. The interesting thing we saw was that we're getting about the same energy, actually a slightly higher max velocity, uh, but roughly the same number of shots, maybe a couple more here or there. So uh, you're still looking at about 55 foot pounds, a little over two magazines worth of shots, so a little over 16 there. We had to go all the way down to this red dot, which is the next adjustment point down. And this marks one full revolution from high power before we really started to see a difference and here we're actually looking at about 960 feet per second at the highest so again all with the 25 4 JSBs just a few foot pounds less than our max now this is where things get interesting because each notch down to the bottom here is actually represents a pretty significant jump in power so this first notch right there was producing about 900 feet per second. So again, another incremental adjustment downwards, but still a ton of energy there with those 25 fours. This adjustment point here marks about 600 feet per second with the 25 fours translating to just over right around 20 foot pounds of energy. And then right here was where we tested. So the last position with our green dot there was our low power setting and that's about 380 feet per second. So uh, really you're getting the bulk of your adjustment within that last segment from the red dot down to the green dot, which is really interesting to me. So it also almost makes the entire revolution of this wheel useless. Uh, but that said, still does have a considerable power range, uh, but just wanted to show you guys in a little bit more detail after diving deep on this, because again, those chronograph results were weird to me. I've actually confirmed this function on a 22 caliber, one of these as well. So that kind of seems to be the consistent pattern for the Seneca Eagle Claw power adjustment. Before we close out today's video on the Seneca Eagle Claw, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you like the content and want to see more, and give us a comment down below and let us know if you're feeling some lever action love. So the Seneca Eagle Claw, a lot of power in a very nice, sleek, good looking package. I'm really a big fan of this gun. Three quarters of an inch at 45 yards, especially for a gun that is this powerful and specifically aimed at a hunting application, certainly will get the job done. Uh, the lever action is absolutely stellar. Whatever they have changed to make this lever action as smooth as it is and as seamless and easy to use, 
Um, kudos to the guys over at Air Venturi. Uh, this is awesome. I'm digging on this a lot. I would love to see more lever actions come out onto the market. The magazines worked well despite being plastic, so no gripes from me there. The power adjuster, a little bit weird, but we're getting huge power, 60 foot-pounds out of this carbine configuration, and that's with your heavier 33 to the 43 grain, you know, with Seneca pellets, a true power monster right here. Not a ton of shots, but plenty for hunting for small game, medium game. This thing is going to be lethal. And in my opinion, despite the uh, numbers that we got on our decibel meter, I do think this gun's backyard friendly. Uh, of course, the longer shroud, the full length version is gonna do a little bit better than this carbine. So keep that in mind if you're interested in the Seneca Eagle Claw. But overall guys, a thumbs up for me too, in fact. Really digging on this Eagle Claw. I think you guys will like it as well, especially you hunters out there. That's all I've got to say about it. For The Insider, I'm Tyler Patner. We'll see you guys at the next one. I really want to like try the Schwarzenegger like yeah but the things the things the things too heavy and I'm too small you know what I mean